Hello, pre-calc kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. Today, we're going to look into some properties regarding exponents that you have already learned in the past, but we're now going to apply them to some cool things with uh, exponential functions and how it affects the graphs and manipulates these graphs of exponential functions. To start us off, the first thing is the negative exponent property. So what is that? That's when you have some base and you're raising it to a negative exponent. So what happens when that occurs? You get the same thing, but it's the reciprocal and then the negative disappears. So instead of b raised to the negative n, you are going to get one over b raised to the positive n. Okay, a pretty simple property, but it is a very valuable one for some things we're gonna look at today. The next one is the product property. So product property is just real basic. If you have bases that are the same, and then you take the exponents, and what do you do? Do you remember? Add them. Hopefully you said add. You add them together. So if the bases are the same and you're multiplying, then you add exponents. So two squared times two to the third is going to equal two to the fifth. Okay, common mistake. Students write two to the sixth. Don't do that you're adding exponents when the bases are the same and you're multiplying. All right, that leads us to this thing called horizontal translation. And this is kind of cool. When you have an exponential function and you do a horizontal translation, now horizontal means we're affecting the x values, right? Horizontal is left and right. So you're doing something to the x value. So in this case, our b to the x, our original b to the x, is being shifted to the left k units. So in this case, x plus k means you're shifting the whole thing to the left. So we, we learned a lot about that from Mr. Brust when we were doing transformations and things on different functions. So applying the x value. So let's do a little algebra here. What that means is we have b to the x times b to the k. That's the same thing, right? These two steps are the same if we follow the product property uh, uh, of dealing with exponents. Now what I'm gonna do here is this b to the k is just some number. So whatever the base is, is being raised to another constant. So now I can just switch them around, right? Multiplication doesn't matter. So all I did was switch the places. And then that shows me that this b to the k is just some new constant. So it's kind of like the a. So what I'm showing you here is that if you start off with a b to the k, or excuse me, b to the x. Right? So if I just have some function and I'm raising it b to the x, if I shift it left or right, then that's the same thing as just multiplying it by a, some new value. So in, essentially what we're saying is that a horizontal translation is a vertical dilation. See how there's an exclamation point right there? That means it's supposed to be really cool. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. That's what you're supposed to think about with this. So let's lead to our little definition here, horizontal translation. So when you have a horizontal translation, you're shifting left or right, it's equivalent to a vertical dilation where you stretch it up or stretch it down, uh, or excuse me, I should say stretch or shrink, right? You're stretching it up or down or shrinking it up or down. Okay, so the, here's just the statements that we just went through and what we just talked about, uh, just to get that down again. Uh, all right, so let me show you some graphs just to kind of prove my point with this. If we have an original function here that's called two to the x, so here's the graph of two to the x, nothing special going on here, regular exponential function. If I shift it left three, so I do an x plus three inside the exponent there, you can see here this whole graph has just shifted left three units. Now this, I could also think of as two to the x, times two to the third, right? That's what this is. And then that's gonna give me this other function here, which is just two to the third is eight. So it's eight times two to the X. Well, look, this graph, eight times two to the X, is taking this graph and multiplying it by eight. So it stretches it up eight. It takes every single Y value and multiplies it by eight. So instead of a one here, the Y value is now an eight. That's a vertical dilation by a factor of eight. And that is an identical graph to this one. Kind of cool, huh? So horizontal translations and is actually the same as a vertical dilation when dealing with exponential functions. So now how do we use this in the problems that you might see? Typically, they're going to go the other way around. So they'll give you a problem like this and they're saying, okay, well, what was the transformation that we just did to this original function at three to the X? So what you have to do is write it and we're just gonna rewrite this as g to the x equals, and now I wanna change things so that they have the same base. So nine is the same as three squared, and then three to the x. Now, why did I choose three? Because I wanted it to have the same base, so that that way, when you rewrite these, you can see this is just the same thing as three to the x plus two, right? You're adding exponents. And now that we've done that, now it's very clear what's happening. This x plus two in the exponent means that the graph G is a horizontal transformation of F. So we would say it is a horizontal shift 
left two units. Now I think in my answer key, I got rid of the horizontal part and I just said that it's shifting left two units because if you're shifting left, that is horizontal, right? So that's kind of redundant to say both of them. So, but I just wanted to put that in the, in the video here to just focus on that. The fact is we are moving horizontally and it's left two units. Uh, okay, so that's how we would do that first problem. We just have to figure out what is this transformation that's occurring? All right, this one, a little bit trickier here. So I'm gonna rewrite this as one over 27 times three to the x, and then I can rewrite one over 27 as three cubed, one over three cubed, right? And then this is the same thing as three to the negative three times three uh, to the x. Uh, I think I said cubed back there, so three to the x. All right, so now this then becomes three to the, and you can add exponents, so it's x plus a negative three, so that's just x minus three. And then that shows you what's really happening here. So you can see from the original, this original graph, if we divide this by 27, it's the same thing as shifting it. So I'll say shift, and then because it's a minus three, we're going to go right three units. And there's my answer there. So we're shifting right three units. So that's this whole graph of multiplying by one over 27. While it is a vertical dilation, it's also a horizontal translation. All right, this one. And then you'll see sometimes you'll see problems like this, where instead of writing out what f of x was, uh, writing out three to the x, they'll just say, ah, oh, just f of x. What are we doing to it? All right, so we'll, we'll, this is the same thing as one ninth times f of x. And then this is one over three squared times f of x. So you can see here, we're doing something very similar to what we just did. So this is now three to the negative two times, and now this is where I'm gonna switch it. Instead of saying f to the x, or f to the f of x, I'm going to write it as three to the x, so that then you can see, ah, oh, this is just now three to the x minus two. And therefore we've got our answer of, what did this dividing by nine do to it? It's shifting it right to. And there's your answer for this one. All right, let's try the next set of uh, problems that we're gonna deal with. And that is the power property. This is just where you have something being raised to a power and then that is being raised to another power. So if you remember this, it's just multiplying the exponents, that's it. So you multiply m and n, m and m, m and n, n, and then two squared to the third power would be you multiply those exponents and you get two to the sixth. Okay, pretty straightforward. So now that leads us to something called a horizontal dilation. So now the reason it's not a translation on this one, translation is where you'd be shifting it left or right or up or down. Dilation is where you're multiplying and it stretches or shrinks it. So in this case, this b to the x, we're gonna multiply it, the x by a c some other constant. Okay, so when that happens, uh, it's going to stretch or shrink it horizontally. That's called a horizontal dilation. Well, you can rewrite this as b raised to the c, and then that whole thing is raised to the power of x. So what I'd like to point out here is that this is just some new variable b. So I could maybe call it b2 to the x. So my original one might have been b1 to the x, and now I've just changed the base. That's all I just did here. So it used to be a b to the x, and now we're, by multiplying by c, it's the same thing as changing the base. I know that's a little confusing, so let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about here. So a horizontal dilation, so sh stretching or shrinking horizontally, is basically just changing the base of the exponential function, as long as that, that new exponent c is not zero, of course. All right, so here's the original function. Let's say we take two to the x, just some regular exponential function. If the horizontal dilation, if we multiply by three inside the x, so if you're multiplying, it does the opposite of what you'd expect, right? It's actually shrinking it by a third. So the x values, to, to maintain the same y value, the x values get multiplied by a third. That's what's actually happening here. So it's a shrink, horizontal shrink. The easiest way of seeing this is just recognizing if I go out here to an x value of three, the y value is going to be an eight way up here. The y value would be eight, somewhere around there. And then, so if I'm multiplying it by three, that's actually making it shrink by a third. So the, now the x value of one would have a y value of eight, somewhere around there, right? So that's what's happening. So this is the same thing as doing a change of base. So if remember, how did we do this? To get from here to here, you would say this is the same thing as two thirds times or being raised, I did that wrong, being raised to the x. Okay, that is using the power property backwards. And then that is just eight to the x. And you can see here, those graphs are identical. 
So it's changing the base here. So how do you do problems with this? Here's how it works. It was pretty straightforward for this. You don't have to get real detailed in your answers, but you just want to recognize that this is the same thing as three squared and that's being raised to the X, right? So what did we do with this three to the X, this original function? We've changed the base. Okay, so from three to the X to get to nine to the X, if we change the base of it like that, then really what we're doing, let's go back and look at this, we're just doing a horizontal dilation. So we come back down here. Oh, I'm even gonna write this, that this is just three to the two X, right? So we're doing a horizontal dilation. You could even say that you're shrink horizontally shrinking it by one half, okay? I, and my answers, all I said is that you would just have to, when you're talking about dilations, don't worry about if you're stretching or shrinking or how much by, you can just say that it's a horizontal dilation and then stop. That's all my answer key shows. But just so you know, you would be horizontally shrinking it by a factor of one half for all the X values. All right, now how about this one? This one's a little bit weird. So I'm gonna change this F of X again. I'm gonna change it so that it's three to the X. Uh, so we get, this would become three to the X time, uh, raised to the negative third would just become three to the negative three X. So we're definitely multiplying by, by a value here. So I know it's a horizontal dilation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. But there's something else going on. So I'm then gonna be going to say, and what else is happening? When you multiply the X value by a negative, okay, so we have our Y axis and our X axis. So do you remember what happens? If I multiply a function on the outside by a negative, I'm going to be flipping up and down. I'm gonna re reflect it up and down across the X axis. If I take a function and multiply the inside, the X value by a negative, I'm going to be reflecting it left and right. So that's what's happening here. I'm multiplying the inside, the X value by a negative value. Therefore, I am reflecting across the Y axis. The positive X values become negative. The negative X values become positive. So it gets totally flipped across the Y axis. So I would say in my answer that it's a horizontal dilation and a reflection over the Y axis. So that is about as hard as it gets for talking about these transformations when you have something like this, two things going on at once. So this one's a horizontal dilation. I could have added it in here, horizontal dilation as in that it's shrinking by a factor of one third, because you do the opposite since it's multiplying by three, it's like dividing by three for, for your uh, horizontal dilation. So it'd be shrinking by a third, but I, you, it's okay to just say horizontal dilation. And then, uh, but the reflection over the Y axis is an important part for this one too. All right, so almost done. The last part's pretty basic for this, this lesson, and that's just understanding the kth root. We actually did this back in uh, some of Mr. Mr. Kelly's lessons. We've already touched on this a bit, so sorry if that was confusing when you were first looking at it and you're trying to remember. Hopefully this is something that you do remember from past classes, but we just wanna make sure we do touch on it. When you have uh, something being raised to the one over some value, some natural number, what are natural numbers? Natural numbers are when we just start counting. You know, one, two, three, four, those are natural numbers. So when you have that, you end up with this thing, the kth root of B, that's what this is. One over something is just the kth root. Let me show you how we do that with this example here. So we're gonna plug in a one, so we get H of one, and that's going to equal two times five raised to the one half, and that's really simple, that's just the square root of five, you do not need to write the two right there. When you say square root, that is implying that there's a two as the index, the index of the radical or the root. The root is a two when you just say square root, okay? So there's no need to write out a little two right there. And then that's the answer, that's it for that one, okay? Pretty basic. And then this one is a little bit trickier. That is just, if you plug in a negative value into an exponent, that's gonna change things around. So you're gonna have six times, and then we have two to the negative two thirds. So what that means is we now have six times one over. So we go back to our negative exponent property, one over two raised to the two thirds. So what is that? You can do these a couple ways. So I'm gonna write this as six over and then two to the second power is four. And then the three is the third root. So it becomes the third root of four. So the top number is just the power you're raising the base to, and the bottom number is the index of the root. And then, yeah, that's it. That's the answer on that one. Now, some of you might be saying, ah, oh, don't you have to rationalize? Don't worry about rationalizing. And when we say rationalizing, that's when you have a problem 
uh, like this, like if you had one, if your final answer was one over the square root of two, some students think that they have to rationalize that. And it's not necessary to always rationalize things because if you had a multiple choice answer where A, B, C, D one, and that's your answer, one over square root of two, hopefully you just see that it's one over square root of two. If it's not, then you might have to rationalize it. Square root of two, square root of two, multiply both sides, top and bottom by square root of two, and you get radical two over four excuse me, I can't even rationalize correctly myself. This is just two square root of four, which is two. So then hopefully the square root of two over two would then be one of your answers. So the question students always ask is, when do I know to rationalize? Don't worry about rationalizing unless you're doing a multiple choice and you don't see the answer there. Then maybe you need to rationalize to get what they have as their answer. Okay, honestly, that's all you got to stress about when to rationalize. Because if it's a free response question, it's equivalent. I would just take that answer. I wouldn't go through the extra work and rationalize it. Just leave it like that. Okay. All right. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in our next lesson.